Hey there, this is me. You can call me Kyle. I started studying the Japanese language about a year ago, and while I've got a long way to go, I want to share an analogy that I find pretty helpful about kanji in relation to semiotic analysis. Let's take a look. Here's some quick background. Japanese can be seen as having three different alphabets. This one is for words that have a Japanese equivalent, such as apple being ringo. This one is for words that the language does not have an equivalent for, such as ice cream being ice cream. And finally, we have kanji. As a native English speaker, learning kanji is pretty difficult. Semiotics discusses the signs and signifiers in the objects we interact with, and how their denotation, or literal meaning, is different from the connotation, or the message we receive from it. Using semiotic analysis, I present to you my analogy that hopefully doesn't make the process even more confusing. Take this English word, for example. What word is this? Some of you might see lead as in a leader, or maybe you thought of lead in a pencil. Both words are spelled the same way, so since you had no context, your brain picked the connotation that you favor and decided it was so. So how can we tell without sentence context what the word was supposed to be? Kanji lets us understand what the word is within the word itself. Take a look at these two words, written in hiragana. They look the same, right? Well, this one is the verb to wear, while the other one is the verb to cut. Both words are pronounced the same way too, but this is where kanji comes in. If we replace the hiragana ki with their kanji, also pronounced ki, we can see a visible difference. This sort of image recognition allows us to see the difference in which word is which without any outside context. But Kyle, what does that have to do with semiotics? I'm glad you asked. Take this example. The word you see on the screen is nothing more than a word on its own, signifying the denotation. The connotation is the picture that popped into your head when you saw it. This is an example of first level signification, or the physical word spelled C-A-T, and the second level, which is the meaning derived from that combination of letters. When we look at kanji, this one character alone doesn't look like much, and its denotation is its appearance. Someone who knows Japanese in some capacity can draw the connotation of drinking something, because this is the kanji used in the verb nomu, meaning to drink. When you read Japanese and see a kanji character, it can clue you into what the entire sentence is about with just that one character. Kanji sort of operates on that image recognition property. I hope this analogy helps you with learning the over 2,000 kanji! <laughs> yeah, we all need help, don't we? Anyway, my name is Kyle, and best of luck to you in your studies!